Hey guys, what's up? Nick here. I wanted to send out a very special video to celebrate a very special occasion. We are coming up on our one year anniversary of this channel. May 22nd is when I uploaded our first of 120 three flights that we've taken on this channel. I can't believe it's been a year. I can't believe we've taken that many flights. It's been so much fun. It's zipped by like life seems to be doing more and more often these days. Uh, but I wanted to address a couple of different things. One, just thank you guys so much. That's been the best part of this for me, getting to know all you guys through the commentary on YouTube, through our Discord server for some fly longs. It's just been awesome. I've learned so much, not just from what we're doing with all these flights, but from some of you guys, many of you are real pilots. Many of you have been simming a lot longer than I have. And by the way, I just checked Steam before I started recording this. 2010 hours in flight sim 2020 so far. So let me know, let me know who's got me beat, but uh, it's amazing. My wife would probably really be upset if she heard that, but that's the story. Uh, so I want to tell you guys, thank you again. It's just been great. Can't wait to meet even more of you. Our numbers so far, you probably remember if you've been watching that channel for a while, and I know some of you guys have been around since the very beginning and our earlier flights, you know, I was shocked when we hit 200 subscribers then 500 subscribers. And now we're at 1200 subscribers, which is just mind blowing to me. I mean, we really have a niche thing going on here, which I'll address in just a minute also, but uh, that that's just just amazing. I can't wait to see how big this gets. Uh, so thank you guys. Thanks for being a part of it. Can't see, can't wait to see what happens when 2024 comes out. It's going to be just awesome. But I also wanted to, because many of you have asked about it, kind of share what my daily life is like in preparing for this. Because many of you have said, how do you have time to do this? How do you stay motivated to do this? And then I'm going to kind of transition into those of you that are thinking about starting a sim channel on YouTube. Some of you have mentioned that you've been thinking about it. I want to tell you some pointers, you know, that may help head you off at the past so that maybe that's not the right thing for you if you're thinking about doing it and tell you some things to look out for some things to look forward to and some things that aren't so great when you get into the YouTube world. So as far as what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, I've mentioned again, if you've been watching for a while, you probably know most of my life story. You know, I live here in Jacksonville, Florida. I have a big family. I've got four daughters, three dogs that live here. So I have to do all of my recording very late at night. Oftentimes I don't start recording until about 11 o'clock in the evening, Eastern time. But I'm very fortunate in that I've had a very long career that has led to me now owning my own firm, which affords me a lot of spare time. And if you're jealous of that at all, I ate a lot of dirt for a very long time to get to that point. But now it's kind of paying off because I have so much time to do the things that I really, really love, mainly flight simming. So in a typical week, as you guys know, if you watch the shows, they, they show up every three days, three to four days, if I really have to do a lot of looking around. So on the first day after a flight, what I'll typically do is look for a couple of different sites that I've got on my hit list. I keep a little notepad down here by my desk with all the different spots that I want to check out. Many of those are recommendations from you guys. I'll do an initial flyover, make sure it doesn't look like absolute garbage in the sim. If it looks good enough to take a flight, I'll draw out a couple of different routes that I'm thinking about doing, and then I'll go and look on the Google Maps to see what all is to see out there. Landmarks, historical sites, museums, things like that, universities, stadiums, things like that that'd be good to look at. Dams, forts, castles, of course. And then I'll go fly over those again, make sure we can actually see them. If I can see them, then I'll put a bookmark and little nav map because on every one of our flights, I've got a second screen over here to my left. I'll keep that posted so I can make sure that I'm getting close to all of our bookmarks as we're flying by. And then I'll go and start researching all the bookmarks to make all of the notes. And I use sites like Wikipedia. As you guys have heard, I use things as, as ridiculous as Google reviews. If there's no other information out there, I visit the websites of a lot of places we're looking for, see what kind of info, additional information that I can get. I spend a lot of time researching. So I'll spend on a typical flight, you know, for recording a 30 minute flight, I'll probably spend five or six hours researching that flight. And then I'll go and fly it again, make sure that I can squeeze it all in, that the timing is good for the narration and all that. And then I'll have to usually do three or four recordings so that I can, I've got a grading scale for my recordings, by the way, the ones that I upload. And I figure if I get about 90% of the information right, like I might mispronounce something or say a date wrong or something like that. If you listen really closely and if you're a real historian, you might notice some of the mistakes that I make. If I get below a 90%, I'll scratch the whole flight, re-record it again, because I don't want anyone studying for their history or their geography exam to get a bad grade because of me. So I'm very, very much a perfectionist in that regard, but I really, really like doing it. I like the learning. I like the exploring. I like meeting people. I love aviation. I love simming, obviously. So for me, it's really, really a passion. And then as soon as that flight is posted, by that night, I'm already looking for other flights. I can't stop thinking. I get up in the morning and I seriously start thinking about the next place that we're going to fly to. And this has been going on for a year now and I'm not tired of it at all. I get more excited every day. So that's what my typical week looks like, my typical day looks like. And then I have to manage my family and work in my business <laughs> during the during the rest of the day. So it's it's a pretty hectic schedule, but I love all of it. So if you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel that is devoted to simming, here's a little bit of advice for you. A couple of different things that I did not know coming into this uh, that I wish I would have known. Uh, I never did this for the money. I had a feeling I've had a couple of different YouTube channels in the past. I have some friends that have YouTube channels. And I know that unless you make it really, really big, like hundreds of thousands of subscribers, hundreds of thousands of views, you're not making any serious money from doing this. You're not going to be able to replace your day job. I mean, if you're completely broke, you might be able to, but if you're in simming, you got to pay for all this gear. You got to pay for the add-ons. You got to pay for the recording 
recording stuff. So far, I am definitely net negative. I think our first, I was able to monetize at a thousand subscribers. You can turn on monetization and you have to have a certain number of hours uploaded. Of course, we cleared that by the time I hit a thousand subscribers. So I think it was sometime in early February. And now we are at the beginning of May. And so far, YouTube won't even pay you till you get a hundred bucks in the kitty. Right now I've got $55. <laughs> so, but again, I'm not getting thousands and thousands of views. And I don't know if we ever will, but if you're doing this for the money with a flight sim channel, even the biggest sim channels, I'm sure those guys are probably not making a whole bunch of money. So the first bit of advice I would have for you, if you're thinking about doing this in the sim realm for money, you're not going to make any money, not enough to quit your day job. So there's got to be a different passion behind that. Another thing I would say is you've got to have a niche. We've got a niche here with what we're doing. I haven't found any other channels that are doing what we're doing with these sightseeing tours. There's other guys that'll just fly around and not say, I'm not knocking them. It's just not all that interesting, which is why they don't have a big subscriber base. And maybe they're just doing it for the fun of it, which is fantastic. But you've got to have something that's interesting, interesting enough that people will want to come back for it, maybe talk about it with their friends. And I would strongly discourage you from trying to break into the crowded marketplace of tutorials, plane reviews, and breaking news. You guys know who the big players are in that regard. I'm subscribed to those channels just like you are, but those guys have been around for a really long time time. And they probably did it for a very long time without making any money at all, putting all that effort into it again, probably because they're just passionate about it, not because they were doing it to make money. So if you want to make money in YouTube, make a clickbait channel, copy other people's material and post it. But if you're going to do it in the sim community, just plan on sticking around for a really, 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 really long time. If you're going to do the same type of stuff that everybody else is already doing, otherwise find a niche for yourself, find something you're really, really passionate about. And for me, that's what this is an absolute obsession. I would be doing this if I had three subscribers. I love it so much. I love hearing one of you guys say you learned something new. You found a new flight that you want to try to take and that you really enjoyed something that you saw on our channel. So that would be the things that I would say, think about. It also helps if you can speak. Okay. You're not, you know, super self-conscious about yourself when you're speaking. There are some big same channels out there where people aren't really, really good at speaking for long periods of time. Uh, I speak for a living. I was in broadcast for a while, so I'm not terrible at it, but it definitely helps. Nobody wants to listen to somebody who sounds like they're nervous and stammering and doesn't know how to use the microphone or the recording gear to get all their sound right and all that stuff. So there's a lot of things that have to come together for all that. But I would say just have fun, find something you're passionate about and just roll with it for a really, really, really long time. And then just pray that the YouTube algorithm finds favor in you somehow, because you never know. It's so funny when you're watching these videos, we'll post one that I think is a terrible video. You know, it's got two or 3000 views. It's just amazing, which I think is probably the most views I've got on any video. And then one that I think is my, my best work, my favorite flight that we've taken 150 views. It's just crazy. I don't know what the algorithm likes, but neither does anybody else. So that's the other thing. You have to get lucky enough to win the algorithm lottery. So that's it, guys. Wanted to say hi. I wanted to show you my face again. I don't get to do that very often because this is not one of those channels where I'm talking to the camera. You can see I don't have a professional studio by any means, although it, people always ask me about that picture, by the way, when people have seen the inside of my sim pit room. What do you think that is? It is the Electra. Can you tell which field that is? It's Meg's field. And I got that picture in case anybody's curious because I was wanting to get a nice aviation picture for my sim room and to get a canvas print that big, it was like $400. And I thought, well, you know what? I'm just going to do a screenshot in the sim, which is about as lifelike as it gets anyway, and send it off to a picture company and have them make it. So that gigantic picture on canvas, $45 delivered. <laughs> How great is that? I'm also a tight wad, by the way, if I had mentioned that. And that thing on the other side of the screen there behind me are mag or vintage travel posters from all of the locations that we've gone to on this. Well, not all of them because we can't fit 123 of them on there. But every one of those pictures is from a place that we've gone to on the channel. And eventually I'm going to get over to my other wall there and put some pictures up there too. But I, everything I do is about simming, flying and exploring. I do it all for myself. I don't want to sound like I'm doing it for everybody, but again, the community has been great. So that's it, guys. Thanks for sticking around. Can't wait to see you all again in the skies later.